Uh, enough already. What is that? So that line Rafiki constantly repeats when he meets Simba as an adult is Swahili for thank you very much, squash banana, you are a baboon and I am not. Which may not make much sense for us, but it did for him. Rafiki's rambling, laughing, and his frequency to refer to himself in the third person makes him seem a bit crazy. When I was little and I watched The Lion King, I never understood the purpose of the odd mandrel. But the more I watch him, the more I realize he has a level of understanding of the world above the animals around him. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. Today, I will explain Rafiki's full story. We do not know exactly where Rafiki came from, but we do have an explanation from the non-canon storybook, A Tale of Two Brothers, which I will leave a link to in the description of this video. Rafiki began as a lonely traveler across the African savannas. On his voyages, he fell upon the Pride Lands and was attacked by the trio of hyenas Shenzi, Banzai, and Ed. Before the hyenas hurt the mandrel, Ahadi, Ufasa's father and the current king of Pride Rock, intervened and stopped the ambush. Rafiki was grateful for the king's heroism and respected his good nature. After the incident, Rafiki befriended Mufasa, and over the years, Rafiki protected the future king's life from vicious cobras and wild buffalo. After Rafiki resuscitated Scar from the wounds placed on him by Boma the water buffalo, and through his repeated acts of wisdom and bravery, Ahadi appointed Rafiki as the advisor to the kings of Pride Rock. Rafiki's knowledge on the monarchy and his friendship with Mufasa facilitated an easy transition of power to Mufasa after the death of Ahadi. Through the wisdom of Rafiki and Mufasa's bravery and dedication to the people, Mufasa was seen as a grand leader. The passion the kingdom felt for their leader was only perpetuated through the excitement they felt for the coming of his son. To celebrate the continuation of the lineage of the Lion King, Mufasa's son Simba is presented to the Pridelanders by his friend Rafiki. Their friendship has grown after years of consultations, loyalty, and fun times working with one another, and this is seen through their embrace prior to the presentation. The reveal of Simba, the future king, appears to be a tradition taken on by the advisor to the king of Pride Rock, for Rafiki later presents Simba's child at the end of the movie. Another explanation is that he is the only animal who can lift the young cubs into the air with his opposable thumbs, but regardless, it's Rafiki's position. When we see Rafiki after the presentation in The Lion King, we find he is living in an ancient baobab tree, where he regularly performs shamanistic activities. Shamanism, as described by Wikipedia, is a practice that involves a practitioner reaching altered states of consciousness in order to perceive and interact with the spirit world and channel these transcendental energies into the world. Shamans are believed to be intermediaries or messengers between the natural world and the spirit world and are said to treat ailments and illness by mending the soul. In addition to his spiritual connection, his staff possesses golden gourds, which he explains in the TV show Timon and Pumbaa, are the key to his magical connection. He also uses his staff as a fighting tool and has spent his years in solitude learning some form of martial arts, as seen during the fight to take back the Pride Lands. After the death of Mufasa and the rise of Scar, Rafiki travels into isolation and meditates, creates art on his tree, and communicates with Mufasa beyond our world, revealing his shamanistic behaviors. Rafiki is also a teacher to all animals in need of his teachings. When Timon is in search of a new home, he teaches Timon the philosophy Hakuna Matata and explains he must look beyond what he sees. As a teacher and spiritual animal, Rafiki is able to notice what others do not. Using the scent of dust and pollen brought up by Simba lying down, Rafiki learns the true king is still alive. In excitement, he restores and updates Simba's portrait and sets out to bring Mufasa's heir back to the throne. Rafiki voyages to Simba's location and divulges to the rightful king that his father lives within him, and Mufasa explains Simba has forgotten him. Showing how wise and eccentric he truly is, Rafiki teaches a painful lesson to Simba that he cannot forget his past, but he must move forward to complete the circle of life. Inspired by Rafiki's lessons, Simba and Rafiki venture back to Pride Rock to reclaim the throne from Simba's uncle Scar. When Simba defeats Scar, Rafiki explains it is time for him to take his place as king, showing Rafiki is a guiding and patient overseer of the kingdom. Rafiki has a deep understanding on the interconnected and complex nature of the circle of life and attempts to play his part and do what needs to be done to keep the world in balance. This idea is more evidently seen in The Lion King 2 Simba's Pride. 
After Simba was brought into power, Rafiki was present more frequently in the Pride Lands to assist the king. For example, when Simba is skeptical of his son Kion's ability to handle the role of the leader of the Lion Guard, Rafiki assures Simba he is up for the task. Years after Scar's demise, the kingdom became increasingly separated and polarized between those who supported Simba's rule and those who aligned themselves with the teaching of Scar. Luckily, Mufasa's spear communicates with Rafiki and tells him the union between Simba's daughter Kiara and the opposing pride leader's child Kovu will balance the circle of life once again. In response to the deceased king's wishes, Rafiki attempts to bring the two lions together by singing the song Opende, and eventually the two do fall in love. Rafiki's teachings of love lead to Kovu and Kiara's realization that the prize should no longer battle each other and should unify once again in the Pride Lands. Although Rafiki may seem like a lonely mandrel without many ties, he actually has a nephew named Nefu and a cousin named Biba. After many years, Nefu is attempting to gain a spiritual connection like his uncle by training as Rafiki's apprentice. The wise mandrel is a guide for the members of the Pride Lands. He's a protector of the circle of life and the members within it. And by training his nephew, he is continuing his legacy and guidance for the next generation of kings. If you enjoyed learning about the Lion King's Rafiki and you would like to see all of his appearances in the comfort of your own home, then I will leave the links to the Lion King films in the description of this video. So now it's time to hear your thoughts. Did you enjoy learning about another Lion King character? Did you not understand Rafiki when you were younger like myself? And what type of pie do you want to eat right now? Let me know in the comments section along with any other ideas you have for future Discovering Disney episodes. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, then remember to subscribe to Watso Videos. Thanks for watching and have a magical day.